All right, we are joined by Actum, active, acting FEMA administrator, Peter Gaynor. For folks in Rhode Island, you might look familiar. Local You're, boy. That's right. <laughs> Providence Emergency Management Agency uh, director, went on to the state level. How has that transition been from Providence to state to the federal level? It's, uh, it's breathtaking. Um, FEMA has a wide responsibility, um, disasters of, of every type. Uh, th there's not a day that goes by that something isn't going on in the United States, so uh, a lot of responsibility. But I have, I have great people working for me. Talk about the, the pre we were talking earlier off camera about the pre-disaster preparations as far as acting before storms even arrive. Uh, so Congress uh, this past October passed the uh, Disaster Recovery Relief Act, uh, DRA, and in that is a provision that allows us to set aside 6% of all disaster dollars for pre-disaster mitigation. So instead of paying for the disaster after the disaster, uh, let's pay uh, a, a larger amount of money in pre-disaster mitigation. So uh, it will be on available f uh, October of 2020, and we're going to put probably 10 or 12 times the money we're putting today. So $50 million today in our current uh, pre-disaster mitigation fund come October anywhere between 300 uh, and 500 million uh, million dollars in pre-disaster mitigation so we want to change the dynamic of let's do something before disaster uh, instead of after disaster you know, hurricanes still one of the major natural disasters that the United States has to deal with We've had quite a few in just the past few years hurricane flooding uh, tornadoes again we want to we want to make an investment before disaster strikes you know we have a very unique geography here in southern New England between rivers Narragansett Bay Buzzards Bay a storm surge uh, what do you tell people around here especially the, the younger generation who have yet to see a, a major hurricane uh, this know, is, know your flood zone for instance uh, yeah so you gotta know your risk right so yeah. what do you live and what is that risk to you and your family or your business? Uh, there's lots of tools that you can go on the uh, e Rhode Island EMA and look at the floodplain um, uh, tool, and you can put your address in and see uh, what risk you're at. And if you don't understand your risk, then I'm not sure how you can actually prepare. So first things first, understand your risk. And then uh, if you're at risk of flooding, get flood insurance. Uh, it, 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 it will pay in dividends uh, should you have a flooding event. And, you know, one inch of water is $25,000 in damage. Whoa. So uh, again, it's it's just smart business to invest in a a um, flood insurance policy. So it's just, just flooding that we have to worry about. It's also wind, right, Tony? You talk about you know you want to educate the public about the impacts, uh, not just flooding from the ocean, uh, but he's mentioned uh, you know freshwater flooding from rivers and things like that. Uh, knowing what the power of the wind, what it can do, whether it's a Category One, a Category Two, or tropical storm. So I was able to go to the Naval Undersea Warfare Center in Newport to kind of better understand uh, the power of hurricane force winds. It was a learning experience. Take a look. Our anemometer is recording a sustained wind now at 40 miles per hour. At this kind of wind speed, we start to see failure of at least small tree limbs and possibly some power lines. Tropical storm winds range from 39 to 73 miles per hour. And here's a look at 60 mile per hour winds. This is now a moderate tropical storm. Of course, the wind speeds like this, you need the eye wear to protect your eyes from drying out. These kind of winds would normally bring down tree limbs and power lines. On the Saffir Simpson scale, a Category 1 hurricane has winds between 74 and 95 miles per hour. At 74 miles per hour, the flesh on your face starts to ripple. Not very attractive. At 96 miles per hour, we cross over into Category 2 strength. Damage becomes moderate with ocean surges of 6 to 8 feet. Even at speeds like this, I'm still able to stand, but it's rather difficult. Examples of Category 2 hurricanes would be Hurricane Bob and Hurricane Gloria. And yes, it proves it's my real hair. <laughs> Winds over 110 miles per hour are considered major hurricanes, Category 3. King Carol was the last Category 3 to hit southern New England 46 years ago. We have sustained winds at 111 miles per hour. This is now a Category 3 hurricane. At this point, wind damage would be extensive, and out over the ocean, we'd be dealing with a storm surge on the water of 12 feet. It is almost impossible to keep a straight posture. Meanwhile, in the wind tunnel control room, the airspeed is brought back down.